in our last class we have studied about the how the different programming languages evolved over time how they are connected to each other we went through all of the basic ideas we have also seen that some of the programming languages that we learn today such as java c sharp and python they actually came from c plus plus and c programming language that's why it's very important that you learn those programming languages it helps you to gradually have a better control over the programming languages and then we have seen that how the previous programming languages evolved the first programming languages short code speed code then we've seen that what are the different languages classes and how we categorize the programming languages we have in different different uh, categories okay then we compare different dynamic and static typing now uh, today we will start with another programming language the evolution of fortran so in this topic we will cover three questions first of all how actually fortran programming languages evolved through time that means how the language changed as that years went by second thing we will see that what was the challenges for fortran programming languages for the developers and the last one is that the last one is that we will see that the where is it yeah the evaluation of fortran programming languages and why it's called lingua franca of computing world so let's get started from the graph okay so as you can see here the fortran programming languages was first started in 1957 okay with the development of fortran 1 and from 1957 from this book the last we can update we can keep track is 2008 that is just 12 years ago okay so the last version of fortran released i'm not sure whether they have released more versions of it but from the book where i have taken this chart is up to 2008 so these are the overall how for how many years uh, almost 55 years this programming language has changed over time so we started with fortran 1 and then fortran 2008 so first question is that why what makes the fortran actually more popular because in 1958 in that period of time there are other programming languages as well so why we are studying the fortran because fortran programming language it first came with ibm 704 system okay that depended heavily on arithmetic operations okay math that means mathematical operations it had different different instruction set so that we could compute different mathematical operations easily now before going to the details of this operations let us go back to the development of uh, environment of development for fortran so in 1957 the computers that we had in 1957 and the computers that we have now are totally different the environment of development for a programming languages were very challenging okay the computers were small and unreliable when uh, when i say small they don't mean like small in size because we know that first generation computers were huge the small means they have a sm small amount of resources such as memory ram and so on okay most of the computers have like 10 megabytes of memory and so on okay so the com programs needed to be highly optimized whenever you write a code nowadays we don't care how much memory it takes because our computers even our mobile phones have gigabytes of memory okay so small program will not make any difference but previously in that time okay this memories were very small and computers were unreliable okay it, sometimes even for the same program the hardware did not function properly then the applications were scientific right now we use different different type of applications we use uh, for uh, entertainment purpose we watch news and so on but in that time the only reason people used computer is for the computation purpose for doing um, different different mathematical calculations very fast that is calculator then we didn't have any programming methodology or tools right now whenever you are developing a programming a program or learning a programming language we have different different frameworks okay you can use those frameworks you we have different different tools uh we also have methodologies such as 
object oriented programming so it exactly tells you that if you want to develop a program this is the approach for you to go but in 1957 we did not have any of this okay so everyone could uh, have to invent their own way of programming and finally the machine efficiency was most important this is also related to the first point because the computers were small in resources so the programs first focus needed to be efficient now the impacts of fortran programming language in this development first of all it didn't did not need any dynamic storage so that was one improvement uh, it needed good array handling okay and counting loops we'll see the example in the next slide okay. and lastly it did not have any string handling okay uh, it's there no arith decimal arithmetic or powerful input output operations now fortran 1 okay even though it did not have many uh, of the features that you see here still it was actually one of the uh, most popular one why because the features it had for the arithmetic instructions for if you look here the, there's a list of operations that i have taken from the book like clear instruction absolute value instruction negate instruction and so on each of this instruction they take a set of parameter they do a certain operation in a register value and then they give the result so to start with the simplest one, the first one, clear instructions. Okay, this is the first one. What it does, it clear the destination register. So if you want to uh, free up a memory, you could easily do it with this, this programming language. Then absolute value instruction. What it does is almost like the modulus operation that we do in math. So if you use a modulus operation, any value, it actually only returns the positive value. So using this, Fortran function, what you could do, you could compute the absolute value of the content of the source register and then put it into a destination register. And then we can go on like this. All of these instructions that we you see here, they actually directly work with different, different register. They have done some operations and re, re, um, returned the result. So this was actually very ahead of time comparing the other programming languages. Okay, next one was in the first implemented version we had this arithmetic if statement if you have uh, done the assembly course you know that if you if you want to write a if statement in assembly how hard that is the fortran actually introduced an easier step you have to write if the expression then depending on the what the result was whether it's a positive negative or zero you could take three decision so it's almost like the if else that we have today, but today's if else they actually have more control. We can not only compare two values, okay, we can also compare uh, different different strings. Okay, we can write complex complex expression, but previously it had only had three expression that you compare two values. If the result is negative or zero or the result is positive, and depending on this, you could to take three actions. Then we had do statement. If you want to execute the same line of code multiple time, we could use this do statement. And if you look closely, this do statement is similar to the for loop or loop statement. So to clear it up and write it here. So the first part of this do statement is the variable. So let's say that our variable is um, integer a or i, okay? So i equals to zero, this is the initial value. Then we had the final value. Let's say the final value is 10. And then we have the increment or decrement. Okay, this is optional. So if you look at this for loop structure, and if you look at this do statement structure, you'll see that both of them are actually same. So this is where in the Fortran one, we had this concept of loop. Now going to the next one, we have user defined routines. Now, what is a routine? Routine is, is all, you can call routine a function as well. Okay, there are different names to it, but in short, it's a portion of the code that programs can call for a specific task. So Fortran one introduced this idea. Okay, then we have different difference uh, IJKL registered types. Okay. And we have floating point variables. The code compiled fast, even though, uh, the mach machine efficiency was the first issue we actually did not need any code that was larger than 400 lines okay 
uh, the it's the problem of the machine because if the code was more than 400 lines it could not uh, there are some other reliability issues it could not compile properly okay and it was because of this statements this instruction set this advantages of these features the fortran one one was accepted by most people okay especially the scientist community as soon as it was introduced okay and then after the popularity of fortran one and the advantages we had uh, they decided to release other fortran versions so then we had version 2 that is fortran 2 version 3 that is fortran 3 and so on so each of this version they do what the softwares do so each of the version have some added some new features or uh, solved some of the bugs or compilation errors of the previous version so for example if we start with the version 2 it came in 1958 it fixed the problems of fortran 1 it has some bug fixes the compilation issues and then we have fortran 3 where there's no major changes but fortran 4 we have type declaration logical selection of a statement uh, we, we could pass sub programs as parameters and so on and then we skip directly to fortran 77 because in between this there are no major changes and in the fortran 77 it's almost 20 years after the fortran one in fortran 77 that is this is the 77th version okay we introduce the character string we introduce logical loop control so what does the loop control means that you can decide where to stop there's a break statement continuous statement and so on then we use if else statement but in more details previously we have seen <coughs> the if else statement was compromised but in this one we could do more so overall the language changed a lot over the time you see this time frame 1978 that we're talking about is almost eight years after c programming language was introduced so you can already understand the languages changed a lot we're talking in between 20 years so this is one example that we have in the book about fortran 77 and if you look at the code in this one you will see this is almost very similar to c programming so first of all we start with program euclid so this is the this is one way to say the computer that this is my program name is euclid program whenever you are printing something in c programming we use printf but in fortran 77 we only use print Whenever we're taking input in C programming, we use a scanf, but in this one, we use read. Then if you want to uh, return from the program, we use stop. Then we have the end statement to point out that the program ends here. Then we have the end if after the if statement is done. Okay, we have the, uh, again, we have another here, end if. So normally we use bracket but instead of bracket in this case uh, in c programming we use a bracket like this like for example if we write a if statement we use a bracket like this so instead of using bracket we use then and end to point out that this is where the if statement a starts and this is where it ends then we have the function call almost similar to the normal function call name of the function and the parameters so this is the function that we have the first function and in the function again we use this if statement there's one new feature here that is go to statement. Go to is also common in C programming and you can still use go to statement in C programming, okay? But uh, go to actually have some different different uh, memory issues. So we don't use go to, but in short, how go to work. So like, for example, you will set different different checkpoints throughout the code. Let's say here I'm using one, then two, then this is three. So you will just write different different numbers in different different part of the program and if you want to jump from one part of the code to another part of the code you will just have to write go to one go to two or go to three so this is like checkpoints one two three after if you need to jump from one part of the code to another part of the code we use this checkpoints so this is one feature that was actually very popular ones okay but uh, there are some different issues especially sometimes the programs would become too much complicated okay to understand because we use so many go to's so they have decided okay there will be no go to <laughs> so the programs will remain structured if you you need to jump from one part of the code to another part either use a loop or function call and then we had fortran 90 this is a much much later version 
and there's there significant changes we had modules we have dynamic arrays pointers recursion all the features that we learn in c programming as well right then we have multiple selection statement that is nested if else uh, we had loops within the if else and so on then we have uh, we also the name also changed a little bit from fortran it they changed the name to this fortran now to understand the similarities we let's compare the dynamic arrays in c programming language okay we have this normal we have a static array that we create at the compile time and we have this dynamic array that we create in the runtime and another difference is between these two arrays you know the static array remains same but the dynamic array can grow in size right or decrease in size so static arrays are located into the stack or and the dynamic arrays are located into the heap. So this is for C++. And in Java, uh, we use array list to support the dynamic array. The static arrays are same as the other programming languages. You declare an array and that remain fixes. Whether, let's say you have declared an array of size 100, but you are only using five. So all the 95 spaces will be allocated and fixed as long as the program is running. But in the dynamic array, you declare an array list in that case, as you insert values, the array grows. If you uh, remove elements, the array shrinks. So I think you have uh, studied the array list in your data structure course or in the C++ STL, but this is the idea, okay? Uh, so then Fortran 90 had this significant changes, okay? And they were very similar to the other programming languages in that time, that is C++ and Java. So if we go back to the timeline, here we started with Fortran 1 in, in 1990, okay, we had Fortran 90. So we're talking, uh, the comparison that we're doing or the features we're talking is about 1990, okay. So after that, okay, the Fortran language, as I was saying, that is became very popular, but to understand why it is it was very popular, we have to see that what are the evaluations or the comparisons of Fortran was. So first of all, Fortran was highly optimized for compilers, okay? So as you have seen in the first part of the chapter, we said the development of programming language is 1957. One condition was that the machine efficiency. Okay, so that means you need to write a code that not only easier to write for the coders, but whenever the compiler uh, or the machine is translating the code or executing the code, it has to be optimized. So keeping that things in mind, okay, Fortran actually, the compilers were highly optimized for all the versions before Fortran 90. Then after 90, the, we had more storage available. Then the types and storage of all variables are fixed at a compile time so that uh, there is no issue of relative to flexibility. Then there's also another thing that the program was less flexible, but very efficient. This is one of the features that also uh, common in Python. So if you are developing a project using Django framework, in the Django, they actually limit some of the things you can do. I will not say limit, is basically they guide you that you can do this, you can't do that. So that what happens, uh, their goal is to make sure that you develop a project in a less flexible because you are unable to do most of the things that you want and the, they will guide you through it that you have to do it in this certain way. But what happens after you are done, the project that you develop is actually become very efficient. So this is one of the um, advantage for Fortran as well as the Python if you develop with Django. Then we have, uh, this is Fortran was a first widely developed uh, programming language. It also defined how uh, the languages are actually used. So if you can compare with this, like let's say the touch screen phone, okay? So normally the touch screen phone that we had, it was on a different type. You can watch a video in the YouTube, but why iPhone actually become so popular? Because iPhone def uh, actually found a way to introduce the touch screen phone and revolutionize the idea of how the touch screen phones should be used. So this Fortran was also a language like that. Okay, that it, they defined how we should actually use the computers, how the architecture should be defined so that we can develop a standard computer. At the same time, it should be usable to both parties. And it is also called the lingua franca of the computing world. Why? Uh, let's say to understand why it is called the lingua franca, first we should know what is lingua franca mean. So let's say in our communication world, okay, we can say English is the lingua franca. 
Why? Because we use English, even though our uh, mother tongue is Bangla or different, different uh, nations have different, different mother tongues, but as a common platform, we use English, okay, for writing books, especially, you will see that different, all the textbooks, they are written in English, because everyone, most people knows English, so it's called, English can be called the lingua franca of communication world, same way, Fortran was a programming language that you have just seen, that it is very similar to C programming language, the example that I have shown you, uh, if I go back a little bit, you see, this is very similar to C programming language. So just the way most of the programming languages are very familiar, uh, common or very similar to the Fortran. So if you learn Fortran, you can actually get an idea about all the programming languages and you can use it in the mathematics. You can use Fortran in the natural sciences. You can use in social sciences, whether it's economy, sociology, you can use it humanities. So because of all these features, we actually call the Fortran as the lingua franca of the computing world. Now, there's one thing that we also have to know is called Lambda Calculus. So why we need Lambda Calculus to let me first discuss that. So sometimes whenever we use a programming language called Lisp, okay, this is a, another programming language. Um, for, we are done with Fortran, now we're coming to Lisp. So some of the programming language like as Lisp, they actually based on Lambda Calculus and they are efficient. Okay, so so first we will see that what is Lambda Calculus and how they are actually efficient or they're better. And then we'll see the how we can develop uh, different different syntax with the Lambda Calculus.